Hey guys, uh, my name's Jules. I work here in the paint shop at Weta Workshop. And today I'm going to show you some painting for an upcoming collectible that we would normally bring to San Diego Comic Con, but this year there's been some hiccups in that area. So we're doing it from here in New Zealand. Um, what I've got here is a Moria Goblin sculpted by the incredible Jamie Buz Warwick. I've already started it a little bit. Um, we get it in pieces for, um, for mold making reasons. We can't mold the entire thing in one go, so we do it in bits. And I paint it in bits and then we assemble it later on. This is, this is a bit of a sneak peek of a collectible we haven't revealed yet. We will be shortly. I hope you guys love it. I think it's incredible. Um, I think it's one of our best. Um, I know I say that every year, but I mean it this time. Um, so what, what I've done is I've, I've done what we call the blocking in of the colours. So all of the main colour areas have just got a flat colour on them. So the metal's just a gun metal, the fabric's just the base red, the brown, so on and so on. The skin I've kind of finished. Um, I always like to start with the skin. Um, it's, I always use an airbrush, there's a lot of overspray. So if I do the skin first, I don't have to worry about you know, missing areas that are going to get covered in, in a flat colour. Um, it's also kind of the most, my favourite bit to do, so I'm usually in a hurry to do it. Um, so where are we? Skin's done, block colours are done. Now I've got to make these goblins, or orcs, I think it's a bit interchangeable in this case. Um, these guys are filthy. They are absolutely wretched, horrible, scummy characters. So they haven't had a bath, they haven't washed their clothes in God knows how long. So I have to make this guy dirty. Really, really, really dirty. So to do that, after... We'll start with the armour, which is horrible, rusty metal. At the moment, I've just put on a, a gunmetal colour. This is... This one's mostly acrylic paint. Um, I'll use a mixture of oil paints, enamels, and acrylic. This one, this one's mostly acrylic. And what I'm going to do now is I have a, a fairly generic Weta Workshop age wash, which is an acrylic paint that's been thinned out a lot, watered down a lot. And it's a mixture of burnt umber, which is a, a dark brown, and black. And the brown the brown brings a warmth to it, and it's sort of an earthy tone. And the black just brings drama and contrast. So I'm giving it a stir because it's kind of old. The, the paint is settled. And then what we're going to do is just using a brush, I'm going to cover this entire model, except for the skin, in this horrible, dirty age wash. So this one, this is quite brown, and we'll probably do several layers of this, and I'm just using quite a large brush and super liberally applying the paint. Um, not being too fussy, like I said, these, these Moria creatures are filthy, so we don't have to be too fussy. They're sort of more sloppy and gross it is. Um, it'll look, it'll be more accurate, you know. It'll, we want it to be organic and natural looking. So I try not to overthink it, just put the paint sort of everywhere. And what this will do, when, what we want we want the, this wash to go into all of the recesses. So all the little cracks and wrinkles in the leather. We want it to settle in all the, the sort of hard to reach places. You know, like I always think, you know, if you, if you wipe something in the, in the real world, if you, if you give something a wipe, like when you're dusting your house, if you're like me, you're usually a bit lazy on it. So the, the top surfaces always get cleaned, but all the little cracks and recesses never really do. And that's what we want to try and emulate here. So this is just a rag. 
and I'm just dabbing that wash off the top surfaces. And then you'll see, hopefully, if I do it properly and the camera picks it up, you'll see how the super simple technique will just bring so much depth and contrast and a sort of earthy reality to this model. And if we do this several times, hopefully it'll look um, pretty good. I do my job properly. And like I said, this, this is sculpted by Jamie Bears Warwick. So he, he's been with Weta since the filming of Lord of the Rings. So he, he's responsible for, for the sculpture work of some of our most famous creations. So it's, I'm always quite happy when I get a Jamie sculpture to paint. Um, He's a bit clever. And now we get a... So there's bits that I can't quite get to with the rag, so I just get a, a cleaner brush and dab it. So I'm always thinking with paint, we don't... If it, if it looks like a paint job, I feel like it's a bad paint job. So I always want things to look... As, as organic and as natural and as random as I can make them. So, you know, you, you don't want to see a brush mark. Um, you certainly don't want to see drips. That if this wash pulls in one area, the gravity will make it drip, and then we lose the illusion. The, the scale is, is ruined. Um, this is a one-sixth scale figure. So if if he was standing up, he'd be about 12 inches. Oh, you guys know what we make, eh? <laughs> so that's kind of the top bit of the armour done. I'll do the leg now. And again, this is just watered down acrylic paint that you can buy from any hobby shop or model shop probably even supermarkets really, it's just very, very, your most common, it's not fancy or expensive, it's just acrylic paint in a tube. And yeah, like I said, this is part of a much bigger collectible. I can't wait till we get to show it to you guys because it's, it's, I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's an awesome, awesome piece. I'm very proud to have worked on it. I think it's, I, I really do think it's one of the coolest things we've made. So again, oop, oh, whoopsie. <laughs> I'll have to send that to the model shop to get fixed. Oh no. Sorry Leonard. We'll fix that later. We'll fix it in post. And I have to keep stirring the paint because it settles. So now I'm just pushing pushing the brown, muddy colour right into all the, the recesses, trying to avoid getting it on the skin at this stage. We will make the skin dirty, but that'll be 
a slightly different step to this one. Because dirt sits on skin differently than it does metal and, and fabric. So now you can see that that armour has gone from being a flat gunmetal colour to it's got depth now, it's got, it's got a texture. I always say I want things to look like they've been in the world. And our world is, uh, well the world of Middle Earth is um, very, very dirty. There's so now I'm just, I'm just rubbing the paint back so that the high areas are sort of going back to their base colour but the recesses have now got what looks like dirt and the beginnings of rust. We'll putting rust on later on. Now we'll put that guy back on his peg, let him dry a bit and we'll move on. Where are we? Where's the hole? Ah. We'll let him that bit dry. We'll move on and we'll do the same thing to all the others. And this step that we call aging is, it's kind of my favorite part of the process. You can be quite loose, quite fast. Um, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be pedantic or too careful. I just really want to slop the paint on. It's, a, it's quite freeing. It also is the step where I think the model, it comes, comes alive at this point. So it starts to look, it just starts to look really good. It's an exciting part of it. And I love, I love the orcs and the goblins because they are so dirty. And again, it's just the same, putting the paint on, dabbing it off the high points. And then it looks glossy now because it's so wet. It'll dry very matte. And it'll look quite different once it's matte. Um, I've done this so many times I can sort of guess what it's going to do and somewhat predict what it's going to look like. And we want, I think at this scale it's quite important that things are matte. It's like gloss, obviously we'll have gloss areas for, for wet areas or eyeballs inside mouths. But clothes and armour, you generally want to be matte. Um, even a sort of satin finish at this scale can, can ruin the illusion of the scale I reckon. So I always try and try and pick paints that have a matte finish for for most of the jobs. And because I'm usually in a hurry, I often use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. We might do that later. It's really cold here in New Zealand at the moment, so the paint takes a while to dry. The head we won't do yet. The gloves and the sword we will.
right. Leave that one to settle. Oh, that's a bit. That. So you can see, you can see how sort of carefree this step is. It's why I enjoy it so much. You, you just, it's quite liberating. Some of these models, you spend so much time concentrating on these really small areas, which is fun. But I always find when we get to this step, it's so nice to just be able to use a bigger brush and just kind of slop, slop it on. And I find with this aging, the more, the more I kind of don't think about what I'm doing, the, the more real it looks in a way, the more organic it looks. And just letting gravity do a lot of the work for me, just let the paint sort of more or less go where it wants to go, often works in, in my favour. And because it's acrylic paint, it's not dangerous. I'm just wearing gloves to um, keep my hands clean. But there's no toxicity in this paint. I don't have to wear a mask. A lot of the paints we use have some pretty horrible chemicals in them. But this stuff is just water-based. Does this go as you dry? No, I need a hair dryer. One minute. <laughs> um, I'm just going to use trusty hair dryer to hurry up the drying process. So hopefully you can see that now that this paint's dried, we've kind of got the beginnings of dirt and a sort of rust patina to the metal. So it looks, it looks old, it looks weathered, it looks like it's been in battle. Hopefully it's starting to look like it's you know, been in the moria for, for years and years. Um, and I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm, I need black as the next step. This was very brown. I'm just going to run away and get a black. And I'm just going to build up layers of filth and dirt and rust until, until it looks like what we saw in the film. So excuse me for one second. All right, I've got supplies. Um, more, more paint to make this thing look horrible. Well, in the best possible way. Um, this, this here is affectionately called the Rot of Mordor. Um, it re it's, it's black acrylic paint super thinned out with water and this where are we um, so if you can see here we're starting to get 
the, the brown has made it look old and rusty, a little, the beginnings of rust and a sort of just general filth. What the black will do, hopefully, is um, just punch up the contrast and you, um, br bring out all the details in the sculpt by, by sort of exaggerating the forms, by making the recesses extra dark. It'll sort of showcase Jamie's work a bit more. Um, I'm going to spritz it with water just to help the flow of the, the wash into all the cracks. And water. And again, I like to be quite random with this. Um, if you look at the world and, and things in the world, no, nothing's one colour and nothing, you know, nature doesn't draw in a straight line, I think they say. Um, so I try, and, I try and be random with it. it the, the, the more random and uneven things are, often the more realistic they end up looking. Um, if there's a super interesting part of the model or a bit I just really love, obviously we'll try and you know pull that out. Um, also, all these pieces too, are obviously they're informed by Lord of the Rings, our source material. Um, so I have, you know, I have a huge amount of reference that I can refer to. That's one of the fantastic things about working here at Weta Workshop is the avail availability of all the reference. I mean, the actual costume from the, one of the actors that portrayed this character is, is in the corridor just behind camera. So I can, I can go and look at the actual screen used costume or one of them. Um, so the reference, it doesn't get much better than that. So again, I'm just dabbing it off. Um, you don't want, I don't want brush marks. I don't want, I don't want anyone to be able to tell how the paint was applied. So it does hopefully look as real as I can possibly get it. I'm always trying to aim that it could possibly be, you know, a screen grab from the film. I mean, I'm exceptionally lucky that I get, I get to paint these wonderful sculptures. Um, Jamie's, Jamie Bez Warwick is an incredibly talented sculptor and I think he's, well I think his best stuff is when he's doing monsters. Um, I'm slightly biased because I, I like the monsters. My heart belongs to Mordor. But I think Jamie just excels at the, the darker denizens of Middle Earth. Again, just dabbing it off. And you can see, you know, I'm not being particularly precious. I'm not paying, I mean, I'm, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing, but it is this bit, the sort of more haphazard and random I can be, the better it'll look, the more, well, hopefully, the more it'll look like the, what we saw in the film. Again, I'm just going to hair dry it to speed up the drying process. Right, if there's bits, you can see here to, to my eye, that's a little too heavy in those recesses. It's a bit, you know, too too dramatic. So I just get a cotton bud. I always have cotton buds on my painting desk. And just try and dab out some of that excess paint. Because um, you don't, although you want the paint in the recesses, but you don't want it pooling. Because that won't look, it won't look natural.
Right, so if you can see now, we're starting to get areas of brown, black, sort of random splotchy areas, um, which I think is wonderful and I think it's, it's kind of what we're going for here. Um, so now this is starting to come to life. It looks like it's from Middle Earth, they're starting to. Now we'll start putting some rust on. I love rust. Uh, I've got a few tricks for this. Um, we'll start, I, I, le I actually learned this one here at Weta and I couldn't believe how simple it was. I think I'd overcomplicated things and when I came to this place, I saw people using this paint and it's straight out of the tube. It's a burnt sienna, which is a sort of reddy brown colour. I'm just going to put some there. And I, use, I do this all the time and it's just so, so simple. Get a, br a smaller brush, pick an area of the armour that you want rust. And rust, like I spend a huge amount of time just looking at the world, seeing how things, things often when you really look at them they're not how I thought they might have been. So r rust is, again, it's always, or well, it's often in the recesses, like it's on the surface but it'll it'll sink into all the cracks so I'll get some of this paint it's just straight out of the tube and I'll push it in with the brush to an area again being pretty loose not being too precious then with a cotton bud smear it off Water. This is just a, a spritzer bottle with water in it. Dab off the water. So now, <clears throat> hopefully you can see on these two panels, we've got the beginnings of rust starting to appear. I'm going to do this. God, I, this is really my favourite bit. I could spend, well, I do spend huge amounts of time doing this bit. It's one of the reasons I enjoy painting the Mordor characters so much is is the level of breakdown and filth and rust that they have is just, it's super, super fun to paint. Like all of the different, every model and every character, you know, has, has its challenges and they're fun in different ways. But I just get such a kick out of the, out of the <laughs> mortal creatures. When we do, like obviously here at Weta we, we spend a lot of time with Middle Earth characters. Um, so you end up becoming a bit of an expert on them all and, and quite familiar with all the different races and their costumes and armours and, and they're all different. Like the elves, you know, the elves are very clean and quite fanciful. So that's a very different style of painting, it's a different approach, um, has its has its own challenges and enjoyments and stresses but for me the orcs and trolls all the bad guys they're way cooler so now again we've got quite a bit of rust that'll dry acrylic paint will always dry a bit darker 
then, then it, when it comes out of the tube. So you get used to it. The more you do it, the more you, you can read it. And there's no, the, the steps I'm doing this, there isn't, you know, I'll go, I'll probably go back and put more of the brown on, like each step will remove bits, it'll leave bits. You just, well, I just keep going until it, it, it looks right. There isn't really, I don't have a, a specific order. I don't think there's a, you know, a, a correct or wrong way to do it. You just keep putting the colors on, moving them around until the thing starts looking like it should. But honestly, these, these tricks that, that I'm doing now, you can, you can make pretty much anything look pretty cool, pretty quickly, just by doing this. And it's not, it's, you know, it's not difficult, it's not tricky. The paint is the paint's really cheap. It's not expensive. Um, I mean, some paints can be crazy expensive, but this stuff, this stuff isn't. It's accessible. And if you do have a go yourself, which I hope you do, this is fun. I find it incredibly rewarding. To, to paint these things. Um, if you do have a go yourself, just don't, don't be precious about it, just try. Just rip into it, have a go, and don't worry. There's, I don't really think, I don't think you can mess it up. Every time you make a mistake, you're learning. So, no big deal. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And the more, the more you do it, the more tricks you learn. So I hope you can see here, well, when the paint's wet, it's, it's quite a vibrant orange. That'll dry a lot dark, well, not a lot darker, but it'll dry somewhat darker and matte and look a lot more naturalistic. So if I dry it, So now I've focused on this, this chest plate area. You can see the leg area here where it, it's basically a flat color. I put one wash on there compared to this area, which is now, it's, just, it's way more interesting. It's, it's layered, you can see the sculpt better. It, it, it's got a lot of different, well, starting to have a lot of different things happen. It's hopefully looking a lot more real than that. And the only thing I've done is what I've been showing you, just acrylic washes. I'm going to keep going with this. It's got quite a few more steps to go before I get to show you the whole thing later on in the week. I, I really can't wait for you guys to see it. It's an awesome piece. Everyone who worked on it is really proud of it. I hope you guys like it. And I hope you're safe out there. Hopefully we'll see you next year in San Diego. Bye.